The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Monday, January 17th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery division. My partner's Frank Smith, the boss of Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. My name's Friday. We got a report that a woman had been badly beaten in her home out on Oakwood Avenue. She was unable to describe her assailant. He was still at large. We had to find him. Eleven forty seven PM, we got to seventy nine eighty two Oakwood Avenue. Who is it? Police officers would like to see Miss Griffin. How do I know? I beg your pardon? How do I know you're police officers? Pass it through. I want to see it good. I'm sorry. I can't do that, ma'am. You'll have to look at it here. Can you see it? Well, all right. Come on in. After what happened here, you can't be too careful, you know. Got to take all precautions. Yes, ma'am. We understand. Joseph Friday, huh? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Who's he? Oh, I'm sorry. This is my partner, Frank Smith. How you doing? How do I know? Look a little older. Yes, ma'am. Type O blood, huh? Well, guess you're all right. Come on in. Thank you. Sit down. Get you anything? A cup of coffee, some hot chocolate, maybe? No, nothing for me, thank you. You? No, ma'am, thanks. Well, suit yourself. Now, what can I do for you? We understand you know Ms. Kieran. Next door neighbors. Maybe you can tell us what happened over there tonight. Seems like you'd know, being policemen and all. Well, yes, ma'am. We'd just like to get the story from you. All right. I was sitting here watching the TV, just going out to the kitchen to get a plate of snacks for the late show. You know, I like to kind of munch. Yes, ma'am. Ate a whole pot of cheddar cheese one night watching Baron Leone. Yes, ma'am. Now about tonight? Well, all of a sudden I heard this scream, real loud. I wasn't watching the television right then, so at first I thought it was from the set. You know, like a drama? Yes, ma'am. Got myself all settled for the movie. Then I heard another scream. That's when I knew something was wrong. Well, how's that? Well, there was a quiz on the television. No reason for any screams. Right then there was another one. That's when I knew it was from next door. What'd you do? Run over to the window. Looked out to see if I could see anything. Did you? The house was dark. So I went to the telephone and called Mrs. Kieran. Mm-hmm. Didn't answer. I figured to forget the whole thing. Yeah. Went back to the television. Then I heard another scream. Right smack in the middle of who invented the steamboat. Yes, ma'am. No, that did it. Knew there must be something wrong. Got my coat and went over there. I see. Knocked on the door, but didn't get no answer. Must have knocked half a dozen times. Well, now, was there any movement from inside the house? None that I could see. I called to her a couple of times, yelled her name. Uh-huh. Didn't do no good. She didn't come to the door. Didn't even scream anymore. What'd you do then? Well, I tried the door, found it was open, so I went in. Mm-hmm. The door was unlocked, was it? Just said I found it open. Yes, ma'am. Go on. If you're going to doubt the things I tell you, young man, there isn't much reason for me to go on. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Griffin. Go ahead, please. Well, I went into the house. All dark, not a light on. Went right in and called to Mrs. Kieran. Yes, ma'am. Didn't answer. But I could kind of hear something off to the back of the place. Uh-huh. Sounded like somebody crying, kind of like a whimper, soft. Yeah. Came from the back of the house in the bedroom. Well, now, you didn't see anybody else in the house when you went in. If I had, I'd have told you before this. Go ahead. Got to the bedroom and opened the door. Couldn't see anything at first. Yeah. Then I was about to go on in and this man jumped out at me. He was in the bedroom, was he? Yeah, he must have been hiding in the dark. Heard me coming, got back so I wouldn't see him. Mm-hmm. When I opened the door, he jumped right out. Almost scared me to death. Then what'd he do? Just jumped at me and ran out of the house, right through the front door. Opened it first, of course. And then I heard it slam. Was he armed? Couldn't tell. And then I heard the crying again. Was sort of off to one side of the room. I couldn't see right away where it was coming from. Yeah. I turned on the light, and right away I saw her. She was laying on the floor. Mm-hmm. Just terrible. The room was all tore up, things all thrown around, a real mess. And her laying right in the middle of it, all beat up. 
Looked like whoever done it tried to kill her. What'd you do then? Called the police. Dialed O and told the operator to send a policeman. Wasn't long before they was here. Seemed like a hundred of them all over the place. All right, Miss Griffin. Now, I wonder if you can give us a description of the man you saw. Other officers asked me the same thing. Isn't much I can tell you. Just all of a sudden he was there, and then he was gone. You're pretty sure it was a man, though? Certainly. Guess I know a man when I see one. Been married to one for 12 years. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us anything about him? Just got a glimpse of him. Not good. Can't tell you anything about how he looked. He was standing in the dark when I came in. Next thing I knew, he jumped right past me and went out the front door. Uh-huh. Would you know him if you saw him again? Well, I don't think so. Just a glimpse, that's all. All right. I'd sure like to help, but there isn't much more I can tell you. That's okay. How is Mrs. Kieran? Is she going to be all right? Yes, ma'am. She'll be in the hospital for a few days, but she's going to be all right. Isn't she able to tell you something about the man who did this? No, ma'am. Seems like she'd be able to describe him. He must have been there for a good 15 minutes. How do you figure that? Well, it must have been at least that long from the time I heard the first scream until I got over there. First off, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was on television. Yes, ma'am. You told us that. Must have been 15 minutes. Uh-huh. Did Mrs. Kieran have any enemies you know of? There were some people who didn't like her. A couple right here in the neighborhood. But none of them that would do a thing like this. How'd she and her husband get along, would you know? You mean, did they have any fights? Yes, ma'am. All the time. Seems like they was always battling about something. You know what caused the arguments? Mostly about her and other men. He thought she was running around on him. They used to fight about it. A couple of times he said if she didn't stop, he was going to kill her. Was it true? You mean about her and the men? Yeah. Might have been, for all I know. I didn't pay much mind to their troubles. Seems like I had too many things to keep me busy without getting mixed up in their problems. All right, Miss Griffin, I'm going to leave you one of our cards. If you think of anything else, appreciate a call. If I think of anything, I'll call you. Thank you. Does it strike you kind of funny? What's that? About Mrs. Kieran. Doesn't it strike you kind of odd how she can't think of anything about that fella? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, if somebody was in my house for that long time, I could tell you something. Something for sure. Yes, ma'am. Of course, I guess with the lights out. Maybe she didn't see. Yes, ma'am. Then again, maybe she don't want to tell you. Frank and I drove to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. We talked to Dr. Sebastian and found that the victim had recovered to the point where she could be moved to her own hospital. We also talked with the officer who was with her. He told us that the woman hadn't been able to give any new information and her husband still had not been contacted. While I checked the crime lab, Frank ran the names Irene and Tom Kieran through R&I. 2.14 a.m. We met back in the squad room. Hi, how'd it go at the crime lab? It's all here. Here's a picture of the room. The woman was found about here. You can see the way the stuff is scattered all around the place. Yeah, it looks like a robbery. Well, that's what he wanted it to look like. What do you mean? Well, in the dresser drawer here, boys from the crime lab found $120 in cash. All the thief had to do was open the drawer and he'd have seen it too. How about the entrance? It's something else that doesn't seem to gel. Yeah. They checked all the windows and doors. No sign of any breaking. She must have opened the door for the thief. That means it was probably someone Mrs. Kieran knew, huh? Looks that way, doesn't it? Here's a picture of a footprint that Lee Jones found in the earth beside the path. The way it looks, the thief left the path when he ran from the house. Stepped in the soft dirt here. Do us any good? No, not much. The ground was wet. Won't do us any good now. Well, that's it, huh? Yeah. Leighton Prince didn't come up with anything. How'd you do? Nothing on the woman. Husband's got a record. Yeah. Mrs. Kieran had him pinched about 18 months ago on a beating charge. Refused to prosecute. Same thing a year ago. Beside her complaint, he's been booked for ADW and suspicion 211. Well, looks like we might have a case against the husband. He done any big time? No, never drew a conviction. Yeah. Thing I don't understand, Joe, if it was her husband, why doesn't she beef him? She wasn't worried about having him arrested before. I don't know. There's something wrong about him. You got a list there of the husband's friends? Yeah. Well, let's talk to him. Maybe they can tell us where he is. All right. Hot shot. 1824, Studio Court. 211 and Sluggy. 1824? Two blocks from the Cairns. <laughs> We left the office and drove to the address, Code 3. The victim was identified as a Mrs. Milo Hudson, age 28. An ambulance was dispatched from Hollywood Receiving Hospital and she was given first aid. She'd been beaten about the head and shoulders. As soon as the attendants had finished, Frank and I talked to her. Would you like to tell us what happened here? Awful thing. Most awful thing ever happened to me. Yes, ma'am. Did you get a look at the man? Pretty good. Not real good. But I did see him. He took all the money I had in the house. Twenty-seven dollars. Could you describe him for us? How do you mean? Well, how tall was he? I guess 
About as tall as you. I'd be about 5'11". If that's how tall you are. Yes, ma'am. How much would you say he weighed? Was he heavy or light? Around his size. I'd be about 175. I guess so. Anyway, his size. What about his face? Did you see it? Yes, sir. Got a good look. Would you know him if you saw him again? I certainly would. Never forget that face. Not if I live to be 100, I'll never forget it. What if you could describe him for us? Dark hair. Almost black. Kind of curly. A little wave right here in front. I see. Blue eyes. Dark blue. Might have been kind of hazel color. Dark. Uh-huh. Now, was there anything about him that might make it easy for us to identify him? Let me think. It seems there was something, but I can't remember what. Did he say anything to you? Not at first. When he came in, he didn't say a word. Just pointed the gun at me, motioned me back into the house. What kind of a gun would you remember? Just a gun. He did say something later. Yes. When we got to the bedroom. He started to go through the place. I told him that he'd better get out because my husband would be coming in any minute. I see. He smiled. Said he knew George didn't get home until 4.30. He called your husband by name, did he? Yes. Come to think of it, he did. I didn't pay much attention to it before, but he did. You think you ever saw the man before? Not that I remember. But you're sure you'd know him if you ever saw him again? I sure would. I remember what it was about him. Ma'am? You know, you wanted something about him that would make it easier to tell if it was the right man? Yeah. We had a scar, a small one, right here, by his eye. It made it look like his left eye was real big. It gave him a funny look. I see. Is that what you meant? Yes, ma'am, that's right. I wonder if you'd come down to the city hall and go through some pictures for us. I want to do everything I can to help. I'm supposed to check with my doctor. If he says it's all right, I'll be there. When would you want me? Well, in the morning, if you could make it. My doctor says it's all right. I'll be there. Okay, Miss Hudson. We can send a car for you, if you like. Might be better if you did. George likes to sleep late, and I don't drive. All right, ma'am, fine. We'll call you in the morning. I sure hope you catch the person who's done this. Lord knows how many more people he's going to hurt. Yes, ma'am. He seems to know all about people. When they're going to be alone and all. Seems to know all about them. Yeah. Knew right where everything in this house was. All the way. Knew right down to a T. Are you sure you never saw him before? Positive. You don't forget that kind of face. See it once and you remember it all your life. Has there been anybody new in the neighborhood? I don't understand what you mean. Well, any salesmen, door-to-door canvassers, anybody like that? A residential neighborhood like this, there's always somebody around trying to sell something. Must be a couple people a day come to the door. But I'm sure the man who hit me wasn't one of them. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Not at all, Sergeant. I want to do what I can to help you get him. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea who he is? Where to find him? No, we don't, Miss Hudson. Terrible to think about it. A man like that, roaming the streets. A woman isn't safe in her own home anymore. We'll get to him, ma'am. Oh, I should hope so. But what do we do in the meantime? Just sit here and wait for this lunatic to kick the doors down? We'll do everything we can. Awful. I'll never forget how he came in here. Shoved me around. Never forget it. That makes you even. What? He won't either. Frank called communications and got out a supplemental broadcast carrying the description of the suspect. I continued to talk to Mrs. Hudson. She was unable to come up with any additional information. (laughs) 